Honored guests, it's with great pleasure that I now call to order South Central Division Humorous Speech and Evaluation Contest for 2015. At this time, I'd like to introduce our contest chair, Mr. Bruce Chambers. Thank you, Al. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I know that we have some. May I see a show of hands of how many guests we have that are not currently Toastmasters? So, a special welcome to you as a guest. This is the competitive part of Toastmasters. We're all here to learn public speaking, improve our public speaking skills, and learn leadership skills and improve upon those. And this, a competition, is you're seeing the best of the best in our area tonight. So we hope very much that you enjoy this. How many Toastmasters that I have here tonight are, are attending a contest for the first time? Okay. All right. about contests and I hope that you will see the same thing as this is a great opportunity to learn. You can see different techniques in an evaluation contest and you can see different approaches to humorous speaking. So this is going to be a good educational opportunity for you this evening. And I hope that you enjoy the experience. So we're a little, a couple minutes behind schedule so without any, any further comment I'm going to introduce our contest master for this evening, Ms. Sima Dong. Hello. Is this thing on? Yes. <laughs> Welcome all Toastmasters and guests to the Metropolitan Club, home of Viewmasters, aptly named, don't you think? We are delighted to host the 2015 Fall Humorous Speech and Evaluation Contest for Division B of District 30. If you're here for a different division or district, you're in the wrong place. I mean, I'm honored to be your contest master. My role is to keep things moving while being mindful of the protocol, the rules and regulations that are the hallmark of Toastmasters contests. Now, before I introduce to you your dignitaries, I've been asked to give Tim Bolger a 15-second opportunity to share his disclaimer with us. Tim. Okay. This contest will be taped, and the link will be made public at conference for any contestants who desire to have access to that link so they can view themselves. Please email me at uh, tim at timsvideo.com. If you don't have my email address or need it or want to be opted out, please see me at some point during the contest so I can edit you out during the public release. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. All right, now I'd like to ask our area and division directors to all rise and be recognized for their service to our district. Please, area and division directors, everybody standing, let's give them a hand. So much. I have a couple dignitaries in the room as well. Mr. Iqbal Acha, our club growth director, and Barbara Beckley, our program quality director. Please. All right. Thank you for that. We are delighted you are all here. Now for some housekeeping. The closest door to the closest bathrooms is the one furthest in the back corner behind the bar. If you go out any other door, it'll just take you longer to get there. In event of emergency, listen to the overhead announcements. Don't listen to me. Overhead announcements, all right? Uh, all cell phones at this juncture should be turned off. Of course, if you need to leave it on stun because you're important or expecting a call, do that. But if you're not, please, off is best. Uh, texting, checking Facebook, the Cub score. During speeches is distracting to the speakers. Please try not to. No flash photography allowed during the contest for all the same reasons. Now, once the contest has begun, our sergeant at arms, Al Calloway, will secure the doors. You are asked to refrain from leaving or entering the room during the contest. 
In fact, no one is permitted to leave the room until ballots are collected. And we don't actually know what happens if you try, so don't. <laughs> don't do that. We're already behind. All right, a quick look at the agenda. Evaluation contest first. A couple of quick announcements. A five-minute bio break. And then the humorous speech contest. And then the best part, the awards. Yeah? All right. Let's begin with the evaluation contest. The purpose of this contest is to encourage development <coughs> of our evaluation skills and recognize the best and encourage to all. Also to provide an opportunity to learn by observing uh, the most proficient evaluators who have benefited from their Toastmasters training. And I think we have some of the best evaluators in all the country right here in District 30. I'm so excited. The order of the contestants was randomly selected before the start of our meeting and is as follows. First, Ron Reed. Second, Matthew Fox. And third, Bethany Dominic. I now invite our chief judge, Elizabeth Agunti, to come forward to provide an overview of the rules of the evaluation contest. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. It has been confirmed that all contestants are eligible. To be eligible, a contestant must A, be a Toastmaster in good standing of a club, in good standing, B, not presently be an international district or area officer, nor have declared the intent to run for such office. All contestants shall evaluate the same target speech. Once the target speaker has delivered a five to seven minute speech, all evaluation, evaluation contestants will be escorted out of the room by the sergeant of arms and given five minutes to prepare the evaluation. After the five minutes, the sergeant at arms will take all notes from the evaluation contest participants and will return them to each contestant prior to re-entering the room. Other than contestants, no one will be allowed in or out of the room once the contest has begun until the last speaker has spoken. The speakers have been informed of the allocated, allocated speaking area marked with blue tape on the floor. Here and here. The time of the evaluation is to be two to three minutes. Any speaker speaking less than one and a half minute or more than three minutes, 30 seconds will be disqualified. The cards will be activated as follows. The green card will be presented at two minutes. The yellow card will be presented at two and a half minutes. And the red card will be presented at three minutes. And will stay up until the speaker has finished speaking. No notice shall be given if and when a speaker goes over time. Timing starts with the first word uttered or when the speaker uses any form of communication to the audience. There is a one minute of silence between speakers so judges may complete their forms. Judges have been instructed not to consider time in ranking the speakers. All judges have been briefed and are qualified to judge this contest. Protests may be entered only by the contestants or judges to either the chief judge and or the contest chair. Once results have been announced, all decisions are final. Are there any questions? <laughs> Good deal. I will now turn the contest back over to contest master, Seema Dahl. All right, it is my extreme pleasure to now introduce our target speaker and his speech title. Where is my target speaker? Hello. Hi. Exactly. His name is Hi Ha. Speech title, The Ocean King. The Ocean King, Hi Ha.
Shakespeare once said, what is in a name? Now I would say that a name helps you develop your sense of self. Mr. Chairman, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, I remember coming to America not knowing a single word of English. But I was a fast learner, and one of the first lessons that I learned was that my name was different. When asked, what is your name? I would say, hi. And they would say, hello to you too, little boy, but what is your name? <laughs> and little me thought, what is wrong with adults? They never seem to listen. Before entering the US school system, I loved my name. In conjunction with my middle name, it meant the king of the ocean, a master of the seven seas. But in first grade, it meant hello. And it also meant a lot of mean jokes. Your parents must be pretty dumb to have named you after a greeting. They would make taunting games, yelling my name and laughing every time I turned my head around. I quickly learned to keep my head down at my desk, even when actually called upon. I became to resent my name, my identity, my heritage. I just wanted to fit in. Audience, raise your hands if you ever wanted to just fit in. Years later, we moved to a different city, and I moved to a different school, and it was a new opportunity to change myself. I could be whoever I wanted to be. And so I decided to name myself after my favorite superhero. I was going to be Clark. <laughs> <laughs> to me, Clark Ha was a better name. He was American, and it was ordinary. To me, that was way better than Ocean King. And even though my friends knew me as Clark, I never felt any better. I felt like I was hiding. That year, I joined the men's tennis team, and my dad showed up for the first time to support me in my first tennis match. And when they announced for Clark Ha onto the court, my dad was confused when I stepped forward. And during the entire match, as my friends were cheering on for Clark, I could see the look of hurt that was on my dad's face. That night I had a long discussion with my father, and he explained to me why I shouldn't be ashamed of my name. You see, both of my parents grew up in a small fishing village in Vietnam, with an education only up to the fourth grade. Though their opportunities were limited, they were going to do everything in their power to make sure their kids had a better life. And like every parent, they dreamed of their kids doing great things. So that when I was born, I carried those dreams. And like every parent, they wanted to give a name that was just as strong and just as great for those hopes that they had for me. And when you grow up in a small fishing village, what can be greater than the king of the ocean? That year, that day that I saw the disappointment in my father's face, it made me feel ashamed. Ashamed that I was running away from my name when I should have been living up to it. My name is a representation of who I am, where I come from, and the sacrifice of, of those who worked so hard to put me here. It is only when you accept what it is that makes you unique that it becomes a source of empowerment and not embarrassment. That year, I made a commitment to myself. I was going to lift my head up. I was going to put my name out there. I was going to put myself out there. I was going to run for class president. <laughs> I figured, heck, if I was going to be the king of the ocean, I might as well start there. <laughs> <clears throat> for the first time, I used my name in creative ways, ways to inspire. <clears throat> and they made some pretty catchy campaign slogans. If you want to go sky high, vote for high. <laughs> the right way is the highway. 
and it was a landslide win, but more importantly, it was my name, the name that my parents gave me, that was announced in front of the entire school. Folks, in life, we're always going to find ourselves in situations where we feel like we don't fit in, or that we don't belong. Stay rooted in your identity. Be proud of who you are. It is our differences, our experiences, and yes, our insecurities that make us who we are. Find freedom in being different. Use it as a strength to stand out. There are things in life that we just can't control, but how we react to them, how we can use them as lessons, that's where true strength comes from. My name didn't change, but how I saw myself did. So the next time you feel like you don't belong or you don't fit in, believe in yourself. Do what I do. Take it one step at a time. Start with something simple. Start with I. <laughs>
What might you be this Halloween? So this Halloween, I just figured out what I wanted to be. Um, so this, there you go again. So <laughs> this uh, year I've been really into reading a lot about space books and sci-fi, so I thought it would be pretty great to be an astronaut. But I figured, well, that's not that creative. There's probably going to be a lot of astronauts. And then I saw this really great chimpanzee mask. I figured a monkey in space. Now they're going to together. I like it. So that is what I'm going as. I like it. I like it. Favorite candy at Halloween? Favorite candy? I'm in on peanuts. I'm in on peanuts. All right. Oh, yeah, All right. Peanut M&Ms. Got it. Got it. All right. Well, I have a couple gifts for you. So first, I want to acknowledge your participation as our target speaker. It is, it is not easy for us to stand up here and speak. Uh, and be evaluated, let alone evaluated three times over, and you're going to go viral on the interweb. So first, let me again shake your hand and give you the certificate. Thank you. Right. There's a tiny little monkey in a space suit. <laughs> and then we have some awesome uh, gifts from our club president, Joey Asani, for you as well. Very cool architectural tour stuff. Joey, right? Yes, uh, two uh, complimentary tickets for walking tours, Chicago Architecture Foundation. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Across the stage. 
who all would like to hear their name come? <laughs> That's just one of your benefits. Another benefit for visiting three clubs or being a club ambassador is that you get to see what other clubs do. As Hi has mentioned, he just started with a new club. He may want to go and visit a club in the area to find out how do they run their Talks Fastest meetings. That's an opportunity for you. You can also visit a club, and if the opportunity is there, you can do a speech, you can fill a, a competent leadership role, and that's another check mark in your CC manual or your CL manual. You receive credit in those particular manuals or even your advances. That's another opportunity. Now, who's going to visit three clubs? <laughs> Woo! Director and she, uh, um, Dee Marie Smith, sorry, is a DTM. I wanted to get that out there because that is a very distinguished, yeah? Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right. Yay! Okay. Don't let me do that after I leave here. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to introduce the first contestant now. First by their number, then their name, then in the reverse. Name, then number. Contestant number one, Ron Reed. Ron Reed, contestant number one. Madam Contest Chair, distinguished Toastmasters and fellow Toastmasters and invited guests. And thank you for coming. And especially to Hai, the Ocean King of Ha, who told me before the meeting that he'd only been a member of Toastmasters for a few weeks, which I thought, great, this is going to, he's going to have a lot of stuff to pick apart and criticize him on. And he kind of threw a curveball there because you were excellent. I had the hardest time finding anything about your speech um, to give you advice on. But let me begin. I analyzed your speech in two parts. First, on your speaking skills that you're learning here at Toastmasters. And then second, on the structure of your speech. So beginning with your skill set, you have come to Toastmasters with a loaded set of skills. You made great eye contact. You once came right up here and you made eye, con eye contact with me, which brought me back into your speech. You, your voice filled the room. I heard every word you said, no problem hearing anything said, and you use the space, like I said, you walked over there to me and then you came over here, okay? So very nice on that. As for the structure of your speech, you sort of had the, the storyline, well, it was a very good motivational speech. Well, it, it did motivate me. I had those moments in my life where, you know, I wanted to do high little aspects of me, but I also wanted to tell people uh, this, the better parts. Well. What I liked is you had that hero's journey going on, the classical story of your life was normal, all of a sudden you have some kind of obstacle that you have to overcome, People, your name made you want to hide your name, you became Clark, awesome. And then you had to find new skills, new ways of overcoming that obstacle, and you found fighting your name eventually with your father's help, and you use your skills uh, to become a better person. Obviously, you picked up some uh, public speaking skills to help you do that, too. And you really won over the crowd with your speech. So congratulations again on that. If I'm going to criticize you on anything, in the introduction of your speech, the introduction is so important because it gives us a path of where you're going to go. And what I'd like to have might have hear, heard at the beginning of the speech was, while I had to, 
I had to co overcome this obstacle in my life, and I'm going to tell you about how I overcame it. A simple line like that, because I was listening to, as your story went along, and I thought, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow, where's this going? Where's this going? So, okay, the next time you give that speech, maybe just a little direction in the first paragraph. Other than that, congratulations. That was a wonderful speech. All right, Timer, can we please have one minute, minute on the clock and a moment of silence, please, for the judges to fill out their ballots. All right, that's been a minute. Judges, does anybody need a little extra time? <coughs> All right, great. Next, I will introduce our second contestant. Contestant number two, Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox, contestant number two. Did you notice the stories? <clears throat> Did you feel when he was talking to his father when he was a boy, and the way he could have that conversation? You're a natural, high. You, you belong on the stage. I can see why you're the king of the ocean. I'm surprised you're not the king of the speakers. And it's the amazing things you did up here. Your gestures were on point. Your, your stage presence was on point. This is a very challenging speech to evaluate because you have all those natural talents that you bring to the stage already. So covering the things that I really enjoyed, I do think we can make a few tweaks to truly put you in that king of speakers category. And how can we do it? Well, the first one, your voice. That's a big voice. How many people in the back had any problems hearing? Anyone? I, I easily heard you in the front. But the challenge is, if I'm at this volume the entire time, no one really gets a chance to have a break. It's like I'm constantly going, and I'm going 90 miles an hour down the highway, when really what we need to do is find those moments in our speech when we can slow it down. If you're talking to your father, and he's giving you advice, and you're distraught by that, that's, that's not at the same pace. It's not at the same speed. You can slow you can bring us into your story at that point. And there were other opportunities. You're, you're going so fast the entire time with that, that rate of speech and that tone. I think if you practice a bit accentuating different words, and then practice elongating words, because what that'll do is when you're up here and you're speaking to us, it'll slow you down. The second thing that I think would help improve your speech, it deals with your uh, stories. So as you're going through the stories, what we want to have is establish a time and a place. Again, going back to that example with your father and who was talking to you, if you were to say, ladies and gentlemen, in 1987, I was standing in a fishing village. It was 5 a.m. and we were about to go out. I remember my father, he turned to me and he said hi, and then fill in the rest. And that all brings us immediately to that time and the place. It really helps us understand where you were. 
how you are a natural up here, your gestures, your composure, the moment you came up and you took center stage, my friend, those are natural skills. They are hard to teach and you have them already. You are a brilliant speaker. It's time to take those few tweaks about improving the stories and slowing down that vocal variety. Because I know at the end of the day, hi, you have my vote. Contest master. <laughs> Please have one moment of silence, exactly one minute of silence, for judges to fill out their ballots. Do any of our judges need more time? All right. Contestant number three, Bethany Dominic. Bethany Dominic, contestant number three. Figure out what part of that main point are we supposed to be picking up on right now. 
So overall, incredible audience engagement, amazing body control. I loved your story. I was very moved by it. Just looking at a couple of things like your right hand and making sure that your point really comes across right at the beginning of your speech will make a great speech that much better. So thank you very much. Thank you. May we please have one minute of silence for judges to fill out their ballots. Judges, do you need more time? All right, we need two minutes of silence for the judges to fill out the final ballot. Do any of our judges need more time? All right, then would judges please tear off the bottom portion of your ballots, sign them, and hold them up for the counters to collect. Timers, please hold up your timer sheets for collections as well. Evaluation contest. We're going to announce the results. <laughs> Exhale. We're going to announce the results later in the meeting. So, yep. We just have to announce that all of the ballots have been collected. All the ballots have been collected. Thank you, Madam Chief Judge. Awesome sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Now 
Now we've already heard from the very talented and animated Dynamo Demary Smith, DTM, about our Ambassador Club program. I'd like to introduce Barbara Beckley, DTM Program Quality Director, up for a moment to talk about Fall Conference, after which you will have a five, count them five, minute break. And then we will resume. All right, so bring it up for Barbara Beckley. to change everybody today into eagles. So I want everybody to close your eyes. I want you to think of yourself as an eagle. Not a pigeon, <laughs> not an owl, but an eagle. Wings stretched out wide, and you are flying very high, because eagles go way up. They just don't go halfway. They don't get on branches and sit there, but they fly high. They can see everything. They soar. And that's what I want you to think about that. And I want you to soar on November 7th, 2015, to the Fall Conference for District 30. Soar for success. That is our theme for this year. So while you're going to be eagles, not eaglets, but eagles, and I want you to soar on November 7th. Everybody's saying, OK, where is this going to be? Well, it's going to be a countryside banquet hall. We start at 7 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening. Now, I know you're saying, that's a long day, right? Well, let me say, I'm going to get this in like maybe two minutes. First, who achieved an award this year, like a CC, a CL, advanced communicator, anything? Good. Raise your hands up high. It takes a to do that. is going to honor you at 7 o'clock in the morning. I know it's early, <coughs> but you get free breakfast at 30, and you'll also hear the 1999 world champion Toastmaster, Greg Valentine. He's going to be speaking to you while you're sitting there eating breakfast, and he's not. So that's a really good thing. And he's speaking while you're all eating, and he's trying to talk to you. And he's going to soar you into success. Then from there, we go straight to our what we call banner parade which everybody hopefully has a banner for their club. You want to raise up high that time and say, I'm proud of my club. Right, Dee Marie? I need to hear the yays. So I want everybody to bring their banner, bring their club members, and just walk down. Then after the banner parade, we go right into whoever Wednesday in our evaluation, the district evaluation contest. <coughs> yes, on the big stage, believe me, it is a huge stage. I was like, oh my god. Are they going to hear them? They're way over here, way over there. It is wonderful. I went to see it last week. It's a huge stage. So they'll get to be on the big stage. Then after that, lunch. We'll feed, you know, you buy lunch. You eat a little bit. Then from there, who, ever club got distinguished, president last year, or any person, you get to rock, walk on the red carpet. So Dean Marie says she wants to do that. Raise up high and soar. Like <laughs> and once you soar into that, we're going to soar right into the humorous speech contest. See, you got a little pack full of fry. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. From there, you get to do some laughs. Not no sad stuff, but some laughs. Then from there, we're going to honor people that receive their DTM this year. That's right. Success, laughing, evaluation, recognition, and just being there to network with everybody. Now, it costs a fee. So per club, there's a special going on. There's always some good specials. $99 per club. And guess what? If you pay that $99 per club, you can invite a guest and they can come free. <coughs> so that, that kind of works out. But that 99 you know, there's always a deadline. There's always a cutoff. October 24th. So everybody put in their little palms or whatever, iPads, whatever, calendars, whatever you got to do to remember the date. So are we all going to turn into eagles <coughs> and soar <coughs> for November 7, 2015? <laughs> all right. 
I'm showing, what time do you all have? I've got 7.24, I'll see you back, butts and seats, 7.29. And we'll take uh, the next part of the uh, contest, the humorous speech contest. Thank you, everyone. Woo!